you guys. Um, I've had a lot of questions and I thought that I would go ahead and edit this image real quick. I'm home alone presently. So um, I'm going to go ahead and edit this. So this is my straight out of camera. Well, okay, not true. I did uh, go ahead and retouch her face. So that's ready. Um, I chose the other image over this one because sometimes whenever I have them sit in these big, huge dresses, um, <laughs> it swallows the chair and it looks like they're floating and I felt like it looked like she was floating. So I just chose not to edit this one. Um, I, but I'm going to edit it like I did the one where she's standing. Um, I shot this with a 50 millimeter. And so as you can see, there's some on the sides that, you know, didn't have backdrop because I needed to be far enough away, um, to get her dress, um, vertically. So, um, I'm going to go ahead and show you real quick how I do that. And then after I show you how to do that, we will use my favorite actions to get the look that I had in the other image. Okay. So first of all, what I'm going to do is I'm actually going to go ahead and fix this and then I might make the canvas larger and I'll show you what I'm talking about when I say that. So sometimes um, when you use this rectangular marquee tool and you just select to about right there and then you just hit delete and we're, what we're doing is we're filling it and make sure that content aware is selected. Sometimes, okay, well that did pretty well. Sometimes it'll pull over part of the Christmas tree and then you have to like choose that. So I'm going to just go ahead and lasso. I'm, I'm, what I'm using is the patch tool. And then once I lasso that, I'm just hitting the delete key, making sure content aware is chosen. And I hit OK. And it should fill that in pretty well. I'm going to see if I can get it to extend that a little bit. I can fix that um, in Liquify. So then I'm just going to choose that rectangular marquee tool again. Make sure content aware is chosen and hit delete. And there we go. I'm, I'm good with that. So I, what I'm going to do is when I say I'm going to make the canvas larger, um, my studio is very small. I mean, I'm sure some people have smaller studios, but what I'm trying to do with the dresses and the size of the backdrops and everything, it is pretty small, but it's doable. So I am, what I'm going to do is I have crop selected. Um, and then I'm just going to hold down shift to constrain the sizes. And then I'm going to pull this down a little bit on both sides, but then I still want this frame to be kind of centered. So then once I have that as I like it, I'm going to go ahead and select with that rectangular marquee tool and just hit delete again. Now, when I do this down here, it's probably going to drag down the portions of the dress and that's an easy fix. So I'm not worried about that, but it should go ahead and do a decent job of patching the floor, hopefully. Yeah, I'm good with that because the way I edit this down here is going to be a little dark anyway. So I'm not worried about break that up a little bit. So the thing with the patch tool is sometimes you'll get repeating patterns and that drives me insane. Okay. So when I shoot also in the studio, I'm at a sort of an angle. And so sometimes that causes a little bit of oddities in the background. So I'm going to fix that easily by going to liquify. And remember earlier I said I was going to fix this in liquify. There. And then I've noticed this spot right here that I'm actually going to fix right here. But okay, so I'm going to zoom out so I can see what I'm doing. I'm going to make this pretty big and I'm just going to push down this frame and try to even it up. That looks pretty good. I'm going to push it in just a little bit. That looks good. So that is so the plus about having your background color, so whatever you pull down or the, your, the back behind this is going to be whatever color is behind this, if that makes sense. So when it's an odd color like this, I feel like, um, 
Photoshop does a better job of knowing what you're wanting because it's an odd color from everything else. So hopefully that won't exactly what that did, <laughs> which is fine. It's not that big of a deal. It's an easy fix because that backdrop is black. Oh my gosh. Okay. Sorry. I'm being lazy and didn't try to like pull my mouse over. So sometimes when this happens, I will screw with that up. <laughs> okay there we go and some another thing that you can do also is just choose this and tell it what you want it to be and that's fine if I get to where I'm going and that's obvious then I'll fix it because most of this is going to be pretty dark anyway I shoot natural light um, and so in natural light situations black gets a lot of blue so that's one thing that I have to kind of deal with when shooting natural light. So what I'm doing right now is I'm just brushing off that blue tint to my black background. Okay, I'm good with that. All right, beautiful. Okay, now I'll start making magic. Okay, so in Photoshop... I'm sorry, and on Etsy, I found these really, really cool um, Christmas tree overlays. They're so fun, and they have like a gold one in this set that's super simple. And if this is the first time that you're working with overlays, um, the background of the overlay is black. You want to change the mode to screen. Magic, right? So all I did, it needs to be a smaller right there and then I'm going to add some blur to it to match the background and I'm good with that that's at about 5.6 that's that's pretty good and then I'm going to command J on my keyboard I'm going to take my arrow and move this one over here now, as you can see, it's obviously over her, which is such an easy fix. So you go over and click on your tree, go down here to layer mask. You can't see that probably because of my constraints of my screen recording. Um, and then we're just going to mask off. So if the mask is white, what we're taking off, we want our brush to be black. So make sure that your brush is the opposite. Now, I am going to say there's some transparency to her dress. So I don't want to completely make it go away because her dress is see-through and you should be able to see the lights behind her dress, but not on the other side of the chair. So I'm going to do the same thing to the other side. Go down, add a layer mask, make sure your brush is black. Now, obviously right here is not going to show any lights, right? Like you can't see lights through her arm back there so I want to take everything off that is not see-through and then I'm going to bring down my brush and take it off of this tool until it looks starts to look like it's actually shining through the tool okay that might be a little bit dense that tool right there all right control parenthesis actually takes you back to 100% so I'm going to actually go ahead and choose both of these layers and I'm going to turn on these Christmas lights. And I like to do it where they pop, but they're not taking away from her face. Now that we have that backdrop taken care of, so um, on this one, I did it just a little bit differently than the others. So in this portrait, okay, so in the Greater Than Gatsby Portrait Retouch Collection, which is amazing, I need to do an entire video on that set alone. They have some little fun little, um, what they call fine art finishes at the end of it. And I mean, you can see that's way overkill, but for these, I loved what it did to the highlights. So I put it on first very lightly and then went ahead and flattened it. 
Okay, so I started with that. I started with the glamorous and the fine art finishes. Um, and then I go right into my old standbys, which is from the Greater Than Gatsby Painterly Portrait Collection, the original collection, which is Leonardo Foundation and then Campbell Soup Cans. And I know it looks wonky right now, but I'm going to adjust it here in just a second. Okay, I actually shot this one a little bit warm and Scout has been at the beach and she has a little tan. So I'm gonna go ahead and take off this warming soup layer and then I'm gonna go down to my um, Leonardo foundation and I'm gonna pull it up just until, so the Leonardo foundation does an amazing job at shadows, but then it also does a good job at popping color. You can see my computer's being slow, of course, of course, because, you know. So you can see it pop those pretty blues and purples um, in this image. So I'm good with that, and I'm going to go ahead and flatten that. Then I'm going to go ahead and do one of my current favorites, which is also greater than Gatsby Action in the Joy of Light, Light and Airy. And it's called Silka... <laughs> silky soften boost and it just sort of like softens everything and this might not be you know your cup of tea but I just love what it does to these images love it love it love it so I'm, I like that so I'm gonna go ahead and flatten that so like I said this image is a little bit on the warmer side and I know that but there's an um, action that I really love called Flashlight Cool in the Jessica Drossen Illuminations Instant Overlays Volume 2. And I love, it's not an action, really, it's an overlay. And I love it so much. It's one of my favorites. I use it like on every image. Um, sometimes you can tone it, you know, you need to tone it down a little bit or brush it off of areas, which is fine. But my computer is being so slow today. I apologize, you guys. Okay, so you can see. So what it does is you can see over here this overlay on the left of my layer mask, and it, and it really darkens this, but then it brings light into the middle of the image and really brings your eye to there. So like I said, it's a little bit warm, so I'm going to go ahead and play an action that I have that's actually from one of my good friends, Amanda Holloway, um, one of her sets, and it's actually Cold Hands. And I love that action. So I'm going to go ahead and flatten that. So then I'm going to go back into my, now I have a separate vi a video on this about um, popping the lights that are in the backdrop. So this pop highlights, if you want in depth on it, I have a video and it's called like pop that drop or something like that. And, oh, whoops. <laughs> I still had my brush at um, 40%. Okay, so see here. So I just, you know, popped those lights back there in that backdrop. Um, oh, you know what? I forgot. I did also use Greater Than Gatsby. The, okay, so there's in the uh, one I've used for years and years and years. It's called Innocence Workflow 2. Literally, like, probably 10 years. Um, there is... Um, an action called pop rocks and I literally love it so what it does is it just kind of causes like a haze and I know that that was kind of like a fad for a while in photography but sometimes in these darker images I like to use it just a little bit just because it kind of muddles and marries all of these colors in the darks and I just love that okay yes I use a lot of actions they make my world so much easier and if you've watched any of my videos, you know that I do anything and I'm game for anything <laughs> that makes my life easier. So now I'm going into Painterly 2, um, Greater Than Gatsby Painterly 2, and I'm going all the way to the bottom to the finishing tones. And now when I play this, it's going to be like overkill looking, which most actions are. You have to be able to play with them. And I love these finishing actions. Do you see what it, I mean, it just really is truly a finishing action. I feel like it sort of just tidies everything up. And then for me to do, I wanted kind of a painterly Christmassy look for these. 
And so my quick way of doing that is going into this Greater Than Gatsby Painterly 2, one of my favorite ones, I've used this on other, other videos too, in the paint portions is Turner. And now it's overkill, but you can adjust it and you can even like brush it off of things. Oh, I love it. So let me zoom in and you can see, oh, it's so pretty. And I love what it does to the like big pretty dresses. It's just so pretty. So I'm going to go ahead and flatten that and I'm just about done. So for me, whenever I look at an image to see if I'm done or not, I'm going to do one more thing too, by the way, to show you guys um, that, which is what I did to the other image is I like to take the image and make it kind of far away. And I do command L and bring out my levels. And then I bring this slider until I see that white and it just gives it that little pop. Okay. So if you want to know how I did the, I think it is the holiday sparkle. Yeah. Okay. So on that other full length, I used this and remember when it's a, an overlay, you want to change it to screen when it's a black on the back. So what I did, I didn't really like this little trail part. And so I just did it like that. Okay. But then to get them over here, all I did was I chose that. I did command J, which is just um, duplicating that layer. With that top layer chosen, I go to edit, transform, flip horizontally. And then it just sort of like brings it on the other side. And like I said, I don't like that little trail. And then I also like to add a little, a layer, um, a blur layer to these. And I'm going to filter blur, Gaussian blur. 5.6 seems to be okay. You don't want it to be too blurry. Because then it kind of just turns into bokeh, which sometimes you do if it's like up close to you, like in your foreground. And then you can choose both. Hold down command, and then you can adjust the opacity of both of them. And I just like to bring it up to where it's an accent, but it doesn't take away from her face. So there you go. I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to actually flatten that. I'll have all of the actions that I used um, listed below in, in the description. Um, actions, I mean, there's some, sometimes I need to do a hand edit, but honestly, most of the time I'm not interested. Like I can batch edit, which I also have videos for so fast. And in at Christmas, oh my gosh, you guys, I'm, I'm not about to be hanging editing images. Like I am so stressed at Christmas. There's so much to do. Everyone wants your time. And, you know, I have nothing to spare. And so I'm just trying to get images out that look beautiful as fast as I possibly can. <laughs>